UCF 25, Cincinnati 21. Yes, that score is correct. It's a, it's a very weird score. But uh, this was a, a weird ball game. I will tell you that. John Reese Plumley went out with a concussion in the second quarter. Uh, Mike Keene had to finish the game. The offense never slowed down once he came in. Uh, the connection between Keene and O'Keefe is certainly still there. They looked very comfortable with each other. Uh, it is a luxury to have a backup quarterback that has started a full season. <laughs> I, will, I will say that. Um, I, I really thought that my UCF bet was dead on this. I, I initially bet UCF plus one last Sunday when the Lions came out. And then it moved to a pick It moved to Cincy minus one. Uh, excuse me, uh, Cincy plus one. And then it moved back around. And it ended, I believe, around a pick You look at the numbers here, and UCF really dominated this game, and it just felt like couldn't finish drives. Like, that was the weird thing about it. You look at the drive chart on this uh, field goal, field goal, and then they had two touchdowns. Uh, for That was Cincinnati, excuse me. Field goal. And then they get down, they fumbled twice. And I, that was at the Cincinnati 2 and the Cincinnati 16. Like, it, they, they really should have beaten them much worse. But they found, Cincinnati found a way to get the ball back, and it is what it is. Uh, you look at some of the stats here. Here, let me go and pull this back up. Uh, 82 plays to 64. <laughs> zone 6, so many fumbles in the red zone. Yeah, it irritated the absolute mess out of me. Uh, because, obviously, I mean, I had a bet on, on UCF in this spot because I thought they would bounce back from an ugly showing at East Carolina last week, and Cincinnati has not looked right. And they didn't look right in this game, even after knocking out the opposing team's starting quarterback. Like, yeah, there's something going on with the Cincinnati team. The defense is not as good as they were. Obviously, when you are a team that loses nine NFL draft picks, you are going to step back a little bit, especially if you are a G5 team, which is what Cincinnati technically is until next year, but... Regardless, you look at this, the total yardage, 505 to 333. 30 first downs to only 18 for Cincy. 6.159 yards per play to only 5.2. Uh, 7.7 yards per pass, only 6.5. Uh, 5 yards per rush attempt, Cincy only 1.9. Like, Cincy's offensive line could do nothing in this spot. Uh, the success rate, way up there for UCF. Standard down success, pass down success, tackles for loss, everything. This UCF defense, by the way, that defensive line is serious. Their front seven is so good. So good. I don't. I still don't know how they got whipped so badly at ECU. Uh, other than, you know, look ahead spot, ECU is actually pretty good, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the win probability went a little haywire because if you just look at the overall numbers, I mean, UCF should have won this many times over. And instead, they had to wait until... A last-minute drive, at pulling up that drive chart again. Yeah, scored a touchdown with 48 seconds left. Um, just, just crazy. I mean, just <laughs> it's so it's so nuts to think about uh, the fact that UCF had to have two touchdowns in the fourth quarter in order to win this game because they were the better team, like significantly better, and it just didn't pan out that way like <laughs> so weird to see this ball game um uh, but Mikey Keen on the day I, I need to uh I need to shout him out with his stats um 15 out of 21 passing 176 yards he let's see he ran the ball uh, just one time for nine yards it felt like he was scrambling quite a bit maybe I'm wrong um Harvey had 18 carries for 84 yards Bowser 14 for 58 and one touchdown I mean it's this was awesome like, this was a fun game, a, a fantastic atmosphere in the bounce house. Like, that is a good, fun fan base. I'm excited to see both of these teams enter into Big 12 competition because I think that the crowds are going to be awesome. Like, when you get a new team coming in, it's always a lot of fun. So that's that's what I'm looking most forward to. Um, these, these teams, uh, this is going to be fun looking – at the AAC now. Uh, Tulane is 4-0 and in the AAC, but you got UCF, Cincy, and Houston that are all 3-1. and one. Like, we're moving into November. Like, we, we have still got no real... Like, we don't exactly know who's going to be there in the end in the AAC. So I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Cincy, of course, two losses. 
This is their first loss in the AAC in, what, two years? I believe it was 2020 uh, when they lost to, no, 2019 was the last time they lost to an AAC team. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Either way, it's been a long time. We'll say that. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.